guys it's V. Um, so I'm sure you could probably tell just by my appearance and the way I sound that um, the IVF did not work. It failed. Uh, my beta test this morning was negative. The HCG was, I believe she said it was 3.3 .3 and anything under 5 is considered not pregnant. My estrogen and my progesterone were great. I don't remember what the levels were that she said, but she said those looked great, so that wasn't a problem. Um, I can look those numbers up on my uh, patient portal if I want to. But it didn't work. Um, I knew going into this that this was a chance that there was, this is one really big gamble, but I just wasn't expecting this. I told myself that once we got past the eggs and the embryos and the embryos were good that, that we'd be okay because there's nothing in my history and nothing that they've found that would point to any problem past that. Our problems were getting egg and sperm to me. And, and, you know, one of the ones they put in, it was a 4AA, I understand it wasn't a 5AA, but they said it was textbook, though it's their words, not mine, they said, they said the embryo looked awesome. So what the hell went wrong? I don't know, I don't know. Um, I'm going to try and not cry, I don't guarantee that I make it through this without doing that, but, um, I got the call, oh, about two hours ago, and um, I'm not sure if my tear ducts have run dry or not yet. If they're not, they're probably pretty close. What else? I just, I'm just shocked. Like I said, I, I, I knew going into this that, that there was no guarantee. I was thankful that we even got to try, but... Man, I really believed. Any of you guys on my Facebook knew I tried to stay positive all week long. It was really hard for me to do because I'm the kind of person that questions everything to death and psychoanalyzes everything to death. And, and, and unfortunately, that means you find a lot of negative in things. So I really tried to stay positive. I did affirmations every single day. There were so many people including you guys praying for us. You guys really are amazing. And all those prayers, it should have worked, but it didn't. Uh, you know, I even kept, um, I kept a log all of my symptoms the last 10 days. I don't think I'm going to do that next time. <laughs> I don't see a point. There were so many symptoms. So many good symptoms. That obviously, obviously all they were was from the estrogen and progesterone shots. <sighs> really misleading. Um... So, when I got the call, it was one of the nurses that, there's two nurses that I dealt with on a regular basis, and one of them called. And, and you know, these people, they deal with us every day, so, you know, they try to be understanding, and I could tell as soon as she got on the phone that it wasn't going to be good. She was like, I'm sorry, I've got bad news. And I just, I was in shock and really emotional and I didn't ask a couple of things that I probably should have asked but my brain just wasn't in the right place um, the only thing that fell out of my mouth was okay now what and they want me to call on cycle day one um, which she said could be anywhere between you know 
now in 10 days, though they found that generally it seems to be towards the middle to end of that spectrum for most people. Um, I'm supposed to call in cycle day one, and they put me back on the birth control for 21 days. Um, and after that would be estradiol, and after that would be a frozen embryo transfer. We do have five frosties. So, we have that. I have to be thankful for that. Those five frosties do scare me a little bit, though, because the good ones were the ones that went in. And those didn't work. We actually had eight left over. We put two in, we had eight left over. And that we didn't have an option of putting more than two in, even if we wanted to, because the other eight were running behind. Um, apparently they caught up enough to survive, for five of them to survive the freeze, but I don't know, in my mind that kind of makes me think that they're probably not very good quality, but I guess I'm going to try and not read into that until they flat out tell me that. I didn't ask. Um, I was focusing on the two we were putting in, and they really couldn't give the other ones a rating yet because they were behind. But uh, not an accurate rating, at least, I guess. I, I, I don't know. My brain is not entirely screwed on correctly right now. But... Uh, what I should have said is that I wanted a consultation in between or a meeting or something, and I'm probably going to call back in a few days and do that because, you know, I didn't say this out here because I was hoping it would be a mute point, but going into this in my mind, I didn't want to go through a whole full IVF cycle from stimming all the way through. I didn't want to do that more than once. That's why I was hoping and praying for Frosties, just in case something went wrong. God, you girls that have been through this three and four and five times, God, you're like superwoman. I don't think I could do it. I'm just, I'm tired. I, I know a lot of you have been through a lot more than I have. But it's been nine years. And it doesn't matter what those nine years are filled up with, whether it's testing or trying on your own or being in denial like we were. It's still nine years and it still hurts. So I don't know. I'm afraid to let them just throw whatever whichever of those five survive a thaw at me and pray. I kind of feel like like I want to request some more testing. I'm hoping I won't have to fight for it. Hoping I can just request it and they'll say okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes being informed is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. <laughs> um, I guess what I'm going to ask you guys is there's a few things that I'm familiar with off the top of my head that I could ask for. Natural killer cells, MTHFR, and protein deficiency in the uterine lining. I don't know if that has a particular name or if that's just what it goes by, let me know. Let me know if there's any other things that you guys can think of. Um, I mean, we just had the basic blood panel that they do at the beginning of IVF. We did request genetic testing for CF for an entirely different reason. Um, that was negative. And... Uh, Based on the fact that I did get pregnant last year with a blighted ovum, I, I you know, it could have been chromosomal. We didn't do PGD testing. Um, I'm not quite sure how much I believe that helps. I'm sure it helps a lot, but it's not like it's 100% either. It's scary. Uh, but because 
that one implanted in my body. It had a missed miscarriage and held on to it for everything that it was worth, what little that was. Part of me thinks that <clears throat> NKC shouldn't be an issue, but I guess I shouldn't uh, assume that based on some of the scary stories that are out here. And that embryo, one of those embryos just looks so perfect. You wouldn't think it was chromosomal. No, I, I mean, not to say something couldn't have gone wrong after that. Not to say that the eight other ones that were running behind growth-wise weren't an indication of something else. I don't know. But that's all I got. I just don't understand it. You do everything you're supposed to do. You do everything the doctors tell you to do. You believe, you hope, you pray. You try to stay positive even though this journey is hell. We all know that. I hope one of these roads leads to that baby themed place one of these days. <laughs> this one obviously didn't. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sad. I'm really sad right now. Before I go, before I go, you guys are amazing. All of the prayers and love and hope that you guys put on my Facebook page today just blew me away. I just wish it all would have worked. Thank you. If you're watching, if you're following the journey, if you commented on my Facebook page, if you prayed, thank you. I'm going to go and the next time I'll update TTC wise is I guess the next time I know something, whatever really is next if I do testing. If I don't, please, please leave comments below. Let me know what you think. Talk to you guys later.